Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good evening viewers, welcome you to Muslim Digest, this exciting show this evening. My name is Omar Mubiru Mosa, and I've been joined by Brother Mosin Kayondo. Uh, could you please uh, greet our viewers? Yes, uh, our dear viewers this evening, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I welcome you to Muslim Digest, and uh, I'd like to thank uh, Brother Omar Mubiru and the uh, STV management for hosting us for this program, inshallah. Okay, thank you so much. Well, having heard from uh, Mohsin Kayondo, Mohsin Kayondo, our dear viewers, is the guild president for Muslim Students Association of Uganda. If you're a student there at any university, in any secondary school, any institute, he's your president. So we are privileged to have him this evening. And of course, inshallah, we shall be sharing quite more with him this evening, especially in this month of Ramadan. Well, our topical discussion tonight is about the social benefits of fasting yeah. of this whole month of Ramadan. Of course, we'd like to congratulate you upon reaching the month of fasting and also for your strict observance of the different do's and don'ts of fasting. This is so great. We are really picking a lot from this kind of experience. We are gaining rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's just wonderful. I'd like to get you back to, I'd like to invite my brother, uh, Mohsin Kayondo, Harun, to start from there, inshallah ta'ala. The social benefits of fasting. Yes. yes. No, alhamdulillah. Uh, barakallah. Thank you very much, uh, mm -hmm. Sheikh Omar. Mm -hmm. uh, alhamdulillah, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for enabling us to reach this holy month of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. And uh, we pray that his peace and blessings are bestowed upon the last messenger, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allow me to take opportunity to congratulate you once again, mm -hmm. like my brother has done, uh, upon mm -hmm. reaching the month of fasting. Because mm -hmm. it comes once a year and it is one <laughs> in which we need to reap <laughs> benefits from, numerous really? benefits. Yeah. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. to dive into our topic of the day, mm -hmm. which is uh, the social benefits of mm -hmm. uh, fasting. Yes. So, Islam in general is uh, uh, it is defined in very many ways, and one of them is that it's a complete way of life. Yes, definitely. So. And uh, if we look at the different pillars of mm -hmm. uh, Islam, mm -hmm. uh, Sheikh Omar can testify. Mm -hmm. All of them have that aspect of. Uh, that social aspect about them, mm. unity, mm. Uh, they bring us together in one way or another. If you mm. look at the Shahada, it mm. makes us the one Ummah. Mm. Uh, if you look at uh, Salah, mm. uh, we the gentlemen are advised to go and have our Salah in the mosque mm. and uh, we pray in Jama'a, we pray mm. together. Mm. So we have that social aspect in mm. almost everything that we're doing. If you look at Zakah, mm. you're basically giving back to the society. So mm. Ramadan is uh, just mm. like any other pillar. It has that social aspect about it. Mm. And uh, the first thing that is there for us to get in uh, this Ramadan, mm. from character to tolerance, there are very many things that uh, mm. we as uh, Muslims gain from fasting mm. that are related to society. Okay. If we talk about uh, tolerance, Brother mm. uh, Umar, mm. we realize that uh, there are very many things that we are holding, we're nowadays holding ourselves back from mm. doing very many things. Mm. Um, one of the traditions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Sallam, Alaihi Wasallam mm. uh, talks about a person that is fasting and then mm. someone comes up and tries to anger you or tries to fight you. Mm. And uh, your advice to say, mm. Inni mm. that is all you say, I am fasting, <laughs> I am fasting. So mm -hmm. you're actually not retaliating. Okay. You're, you're being tolerant, you're holding yourself back mm. uh, during this holy month and okay. mm. giving into whatever the person has done and mm. just mm. overlooking it. Okay. Aside from that, we're also uh, looking at the way you are controlling yourself. There's a mm. lot of mm. self-control that is happening during this month mm. because uh, we know that uh, the ayah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that the end goal of fasting, لَعَلَّكُمْ mm. تَتَّقُونَ Okay. So that you may uh, become more God conscious, more righteous. Mm. And uh, mm. as we try to achieve this self purification, mm. uh, people tend to ease out on the, some of the acts that they've been doing mm. that uh, they now realize that, okay, mm. maybe uh, this act is actually, mm. probably they know it, but they've not been taking uh, a lot of heed about it. Okay. But they now actually mm. realize that it is a social vice and mm. they somehow hold back. Okay. And, uh, 
if we talk about the food alone, mm. you it is self control really because uh, mm. people have fridges that are full of food. Mm. They can easily you could easily access it, mm. but uh, what happens is that you let it be for the entire day, from uh, dawn up to dusk. You're not eating regardless mm. of whether you have the food, mm. and uh, sometimes you have young kids. You prepare for them the meals, but mm. Mm. you'd still ensure that you do not actually eat. Okay. So there's a very big aspect, and uh, if we look at uh, society, mm. a human being was created as a social animal. Mm. So some of these things that we do, this tolerance that we're getting, mm. how it impacts us is that you're able to actually live with others because mm. you can now tolerate the differences. Okay. That uh, you know that this world is mm. vast. Okay. There are different colors, different mm. languages, mm. all created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. And you respect everyone in their dignity. Okay. So it, it's really key and uh, it comes mm. up in that we are really going to learn a lot and uh, if we're able to take on these acts yeah. even beyond Ramadan then society will really be a changed yes. place it will be a very good there's place there's something you mentioned about tolerance yes that uh, if somebody angers you you really you know dress that composure yes you really f go call and simply say in this way exactly. fasting yes. it's very interesting because we have seen many people wrestling others down Mm. simply because they feel they have the energy that it takes exactly. to raise them down. You have seen people, you know, engaging in lots of things. Yes. Okay? They're always ready to retaliate. They have whatever it takes. Mm. Yes. Okay? Somebody raises you down, somebody abuses you, somebody, you know, blackmails you, tarnishes your name, exactly. you know? You really get so cold and you can't retaliate. Exactly. Uh, I think this is something very important yes. because it's a discipline yes. that you learn over time and you are able to really showcase the best of you know, the personalities. Yes. Uh, what is your take as far as the situation right now is concerned, especially in the context of the family you know, dynamics? Uh, in the context of the family dynamics, uh if you look at the current situation, in that uh, this holy month of Ramadan has uh, found us under lockdown, mm -hmm. so we are in our homes. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we've not been used to it, but now we're living with our family members full time. Mm -hmm. There's a lot that we're going to see, uh, or they're going to do very many things that we may not, uh, we may not per se, they may not appease us per se, mm -hmm. but uh, because we're fasting, mm -hmm. we're going to let it go. You're going okay. to try to create an environment mm. that uh, is good for everyone. Okay. You want to have them uh, mm. happy. Mm. You're trying to ensure that you earn all the benefits of fasting from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. So you try to cut down on anything that may nullify your fasting. Okay. And uh, therefore, in the end, mm. you're going to live with your family in harmony. Okay. Because everyone is going to be trying. Uh, mm. there's, there's, it's a very interesting mm. because... Um, for example, I talked about uh, having some kids at home mm. that you need to feed regardless of, because for them they are still too young mm. to fast, mm. regardless of whether you're not eating. So mm. uh, there's that aspect of the wife has to cook, mm. and uh, so she has to cook for the, she has to prepare breakfast mm. for the kids, then she prepares for them lunch, mm. and then uh, you're also waiting for iftar, mm. but then there's a pile of clothes somewhere waiting, mm. maybe the compound is dirty. So. Mm. Mm. Uh, in this month and with the current situation, mm. you should be able to come out and help. Okay. The, the kids should be able to come out and help. Mm. Uh, the husbands should be able to come out and help the wives mm. in uh, some of these aspects. And we build that bond okay. so that the wives don't feel like everything has been left for them mm. uh, because they have to take care of the house. So okay. you're going to, as a husband, you wake up and sit and mm. you want the iftar, you want the clothes clean. Mm. And uh, yet, she is actually, mm. uh, she has a heavy pile of work. Okay, so there is that component of family togetherness. Exactly. Where you harmonize and get together and joke and, you know, do yes. lots of things together. Yes. Because I see it as an opportunity in life that uh, people are together in their families. Therefore, if they don't tolerate whatever they find at home, mm. then it becomes a disaster. Yes. Violence has to take shape. Exactly. Disrespect. Yes. Okay. And actually, there's been a lot of uh, 
domestic violence going on with the current mm -hmm. uh, COVID-19 mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. So maybe as we first, we're going to reflect and uh, mm -hmm. see that we try and harmonize this. Mm -hmm. We try and harmonize our families. We synchronize with each other. Okay. We understand that uh, we're all human beings and mm -hmm. we have limitations. And by the way, what is interesting also, according to your, uh, your message, yes. realize mm -hmm. that uh, parents have always stood aloof some parents from their children, yes. and now that they are back home from schools, some of them are in boarding schools, yes. now that they are back from schools and they are at home, you get an opportunity to learn from them. The way they behave, you also, uh, you know, you also take charge of trying to correct their ways of life. Yes. I think it's an opportunity that you really get from such a kind of experience. Yes, indeed, okay. uh, indeed Ramadan is a training for very many things. Uh, especially this one in particular, because it has come at a point where uh, the families are close. Uh, usually, they're distant, the kids are at the boarding schools, they have yeah. half the period of fasting there, and maybe one week at home, yeah. and uh, perhaps they've come home with homework, so there's, no, there's uh, the whole time they're there, they're doing homework, homework, and uh, all they look forward to is daku and iftar, and they okay. don't get engaged, but yeah. this time there's a lot of engagement, and. Yeah. Uh, is a lot that we're going to learn mm. and the actual aspect of mm. gaining righteousness can mm. actually be brought out okay. from the examples the kids mm. will see of the parents. When you mention the issue of tolerance, what rang into my mind yes. is this kind of the alternative measures yes. of, of punishing children because if you really get angered yes. and you don't fight back, you don't retaliate, contextually it means that you don't even you know, beat Mm, unless yes, otherwise, yes. unless it, it really demands much. Exactly. So that means it's a training experience that as a parent, you also try to devise mm. certain alternative measures because you have now time to speak to your children, yes. you know, to really advise them, to nurture them, you know, to train them on different issues. It is. You see? Because yes. sometimes we feel that we really need to be so much vigilant and aggressive in the event of trying to inculcate some disciplinary measures in the children. Yes, in, the fact, in, the, in the context now yes. of fasting, where you really stand out to be very peaceful, your heart flows out, okay. you know, the children, okay? Simultaneously or concurrently, they are also in one or the other doing certain, uh, you know, misbehaviors. Mm. So you really get on to the tune of mm. trying to nurture them to see that Besides the beating, maybe you also you take up really a new measure to okay. ensure that at least you still instill a discipline, mm -hmm. but uh, without being extremist. Okay. Yes. So as a social benefit, our dear uh, viewers, our topical discussion tonight is about the social benefits that accrue from, uh, you know, the act of fasting. Mm -hmm. Okay. What we benefit socially in a social perspective when we do observe the fasting. And Brother Mohsen uh, Kayono, the guild president for Muslim students in this country, has already spoken about tolerance as a very important virtue. And I'd like to get back to him to uh, get us more. Yes, so, uh, aside from tolerance, there is, uh, there is character. Character. Uh, character building. Mm. There is, I don't think there's an institution in uh, this world that does not have uh, as one of its values, mm -hmm. as, as one of its core values for the institution, mm -hmm. a value that is related to character. Okay. We usually see, I think the most common one I've seen is integrity. Mm -hmm. um, others have values like respect for self, respect mm -hmm. for others. Mm -hmm. So, Honesty, this, yeah, exactly. respect for self, respect for others. All these, all mm -hmm. these values mm -hmm. are, so every institution in this mm -hmm. society mm -hmm. uh, loves someone that's is morally upright. Regardless of color, regardless of religion, regardless of tribe, you know. They, they, yeah, these are of acceptable standards exactly. in the community. It's character. Okay. Um, there's, there's a saying that I had mm. that uh, if you work hard, mm. basically hard work will get you to the top. Okay. But then remaining at the top, mm. you need that character okay. to keep you there. Mm. So comes back to socialization, how mm. you deal with people. Mm. How you deal with people is going to be a very big factor mm -hmm. in uh, keeping you at the top. So okay. we come back to character. Mm. And like we've said, uh, in this holy month of Ramadan, mm. 
uh, righteousness is the uh, utmost goal that we're aiming to achieve. Okay. And uh, there are a few things that have been forbidden for us mm. in this month. Some mm. that are uh, usually acceptable in the other months. Mm. Uh, some are completely haram, but some people do them. Mm. And, uh, but in this month, mm. you find that, like we've talked about, self-control, it's an aspect that comes back here. Mm. You find that people are uh, cutting short mm. on uh, some things. Okay. Yeah, just, uh, we need to take a very short break on that point. When we get back, you'll pick from there. Inshallah. Mm. Coming back from that commercial break, our dear viewers on STV, a program on air right now, Muslim Digest. My name is Omar Muiru Mosa in the studios, and uh, I was joined by Brother Mosin uh, Kayondo. We are speaking about the social benefits of fasting, and I would like to get back to uh, Brother Mosin to pick from where he stopped. Yes, uh, so we're talking about carbs. Mm -hmm. and, uh, like I said, all institutions, uh, mm. schools, mm. companies, offices, mm. they value character a lot mm. more. Okay. Soft skills are mm. very important really. Mm. Uh, because you realize that there's someone that has probably never advertised their business, mm. but they get a lot more customers than some people that do a lot of advertising. Mm. And the question may be how. Mm. But uh, it is because of that trustworthiness that uh, honesty that this person may have in their business. Mm. The fact that uh, you may give them more money than required and they return it. Mm. The fact that their scales will actually be up to balance. Mm. The fact that they will sell good quality products to you. Mm. This is what will make mm. the people that buy from him mm. will advertise him mm. without him saying anything. So I have, I have uh, experienced and indeed you are evidence to us and the general community at large the main people transact business the wrong way. They don't really unveil the defects of what they really sell out, okay? So that goes back to the character, the moral uprightness. But as you advance your undoings, you are creating a gap between yourself and the community. Actually, there's a, there's a time I was in a saloon, mm. and uh, the saloon also had a store for where they sell movies, mm. but uh, the gentleman that runs the store was not around mm. that particular day. Mm. So when someone came in and wanted to buy the movie, mm. the gentleman, the barber, said, I'm not the one that works at that store. Mm. The gentleman said, I can leave the money here. Mm. So the barber said, I prefer if the other gentleman was around himself. Mm. So in the end, I asked him, how come you didn't, he could have just picked the CD and he leaves with the money. Mm. And he said, these things are difficult. Mm. Sometimes the name of the movie that is there is mm. not actually the mm. city that is inside. So the person is going to come back mm. and actually have their anger at me. Mm. If I sold them a robot, mm. but it's not my business, so I do mm. not want mm. to go into that because I know it will damage okay. my name. Okay. So it is really uh, a mm. very big issue mm. that we have. But uh, by ensuring that we are being truthful mm. during this month, mm. by trying to do our transactions to the maximum, be honest, mm -hmm. uh, by holding ourselves back, having that self-control. Mm -hmm. We're going to build this and if we take it into the other months that are not Ramadan, mm -hmm. society is really going to change into a better place. Okay. Because uh, the truth is we cannot, mm -hmm. no man is an island. We mm -hmm. need others. We need to work with each other. Okay. And uh, those engagements, like mm -hmm. it or not, will happen in life. Mm -hmm. And uh, therefore, we need, to, we need to ensure that we try and better ourselves okay. for, the whole, for the benefit of the entire society. Okay. Yes. And the, the, the other big advantage is that the cells come your way. Exactly. Because you grow the cells and finally you really develop so much. Yes. You really develop, you also affect the general community positively aware. Yes. Okay, thank you so much. Yes, uh, of course, besides uh, tolerance and character, uh, yes, which other benefit would you wish to share with our dear viewers? I'd like to look at uh, interpersonal skills. Mm. 
fasting and this holy month can actually build your interpersonal skills. I'm going to look at this from a point of view of um, exposure is what uh, allows people to be able to create that, uh, to learn how to live with other people. Okay. And uh, in this holy month, uh, the rich mm. will open their gates to invite the poor for a meal of iftar. Okay. So this person is going to be exposed to a new environment. Mm. And the skills that, uh, the things that they're going to learn by interacting with these people, mm. uh, maybe the unlearned people interacting with those that are learned, they're eating from the same place. The, mm. From the interactions that go on there, there's going to be a lot of skills that are learned. Mm. Uh, the charity alone mm. is something that uh, mm. the younger generations pick up on. Mm. When they see uh, daddy and mommy are opening up doors in this month, they invite people to come and eat. Mm is something that they pick up on and mm. they take it further. Mm. Uh, and I believe that is one of the reasons why the habit of giving has actually uh, never died out. Because uh, people keep seeing it, mm. they learn it, and they know that uh, mm. during this month, mm. I have to invite my friends, mm. invite the general community to come and mm. to have a meal together, share okay. something for the benefit mm. of uh, Islam in general. Okay. So interpersonal skills actually uh, is something <coughs> that we learn during mm. this month. Uh, mm. The other thing, I'll talk about is the Suhur meal. Mm. Um, this one I'm going to particularly relate it to uh, mm. back in high school. The, the Suhur, the pre dawn meal, yes, the Daku. The Daku. Mm. Um, there's a way it uh, created a bond between people that mm. used not to previously engage a lot. Mm. Only because that person is in the same dormitory with you, mm -hmm. and because they know you're Muslim, they come and wake you up. Mm. Maybe they're in S6 and you're in S1. Mm you really feel like they're at a higher level because you're in S1, but mm. at that particular point in time, mm. the person comes down and mm. wakes you up. Mm. Uh, the feeling that you get, okay. the, the, there's a lot that you learn from it. Mm. And uh, you learn how to relate with those people, mm. the adults. Okay. Because uh, regardless of your level, you realize that mm. at any point in time, you're going to mm. relate with all different kinds of people. Okay. So you learn how to relate with all those people because you eat mm. with them, mm. have a share a meal, uh, they're the ones taking time to wake you up. Mm. So it also brings about brotherhood. There's that okay. bond, that unity mm. that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps us to enforce in this world. Okay. Really so there's that charity, there's that generosity that is really demonstrated yes. between those who have and those who really do not have. Yes. I think uh, right now, because we are experiencing the COVID-19, yes. uh, there's nothing like this kind of gathering at the most level, people have not invited others for a, for a meal, you know. Uh, what is your recommendation in this respect? How do we, you know, customize this and how can we be able to really carry on this kind of generosity? Personally, as a, as a leader, I would say that uh, there are structures that are in place mm. uh, that can help us reach these people. Mm. Our imams mm. at uh, the different local mosques, mm. uh, by virtue of fact that they're the ones in charge of giving out zakat. Mm. So I would assume that they know the people that are in a dire state okay. and uh, would really utilize the help mm. that is usually given. The ones that probably in the previous Ramadans mm. have been uh, unfasting from the mosque mm. for full 30 days, mm. uh, they know they have a meal that is set at the mm. mosque. Okay. But this time it's not possible to do Because that. it's quite possible that somebody spends the entire month without spending out of his pocket. Exactly. It's very possible because, like you mm. say, there's a lot of generosity in this month. Mm. Yes. So it's very possible that someone will go 30 days without mm. ever having bought anything for yeah. his own money. Yes. Uh, I remember a particular scenario at uh, uh, Old Kampala Mosque where it was a, a car packed and uh, this family was literally rushing to give juice to everyone that walked in mm. because uh, we all know the benefits of unfasting some mm. uh, the reward that comes with it so they mm. wanted to be the ones that mm. break everyone's fast that walks mm. in mm. so they were hurrying to give their glass of juice to everyone that comes in mm. so that these people don't so that they have this juice before they reach the mosque okay that they are the first so mm. uh, coming back to the point of how we can now help these people mm. since they are no gathering mm. uh, our imams know who these people are, okay. that's what I believe. Okay. And I believe that we can reach out to our imams. Mm. And uh, the, the government has put very many guidelines for distribution. Mm. And our imams can help us with this. They can uh, be able to get this food. Mm. If it is uh, 
if it is money, if someone can send mobile money, it okay. can be sent and it can be received. Mm. Mm. Uh, perhaps mm. if some people need some guidelines on mm. Mm. Uh, how to utilize it properly so if they don't mm. spend it at once, okay. we can also help render those. Charts. Okay. So that brotherhood bond is really created and, mm. and really built up to ensure that uh, people are together and enjoying together and they're also really fasting uh, smoothly. I think that is a very important aspect yes. as a social benefit. Yes. As people get together, as people have, uh, you know, the moral uprightness, the moral fabric, as people cherish tolerance, then I hope there's really a great deal that you can be able to cultivate out of this uh, fasting period. Uh, that said, uh, I will also uh, probably prompt you to speak about uh, uh, you know, the, the, the financial discipline yes. aspect. Don't you realize that among the social benefits, there's that component of the financial discipline yes. uh, the, that the, grows wings to affect the general community? Yes, that, that component is most definitely there. Mm. Because uh, if you look at the days when we are not fasting, mm. Uh, our expenditure is a bit extravagant. Okay. Um, you probably have breakfast, mm. lunch. Mm. Actually, you may have a meal like at 10 a.m., <laughs> have something, have a snack, mm. you have lunch, mm. uh, then at 6 p.m., you have mm. some evening tea, then at night, mm. you have supper. Mm. So if you look at uh, all that, mm. ideally, three meals can be enough for day. Mm. But also, um, so most times we like to hang out so mm. sometimes the places where we are hanging out mm. the expenditure is a lot more okay other than if you are eating from home right? no. okay so in this month we get to cut down on that okay we are very especially in this period with COVID-19 we are all very vigilant about our expenditure because it mm. has mm. Uh, hurt the economy so much okay uh, and especially even individuals mm. from a personal level mm. so with that, uh, you can see that people are very vigilant about how they spend mm -hmm. the month of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. uh, budget for uh, Daku mm -hmm. and Iftar, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe you also budget for what you're going to give in charity. Okay. So that is where the social aspect comes in. Okay. We now turn our money to mm -hmm. instead of doing what we would have been doing mm -hmm. without, if we are not fasting, mm -hmm. we're looking at giving a lot more in charity. Okay. We're directing our money to mm. more specific purposes okay. that are beneficial to the entire community. Mm. Uh, and uh, at that point, I implore us all to mm. ensure that we gain a saving culture, mm. perhaps. Mm. You can save as an individual, you could save as a group, mm. but just have a set target, a vision, and a purpose mm. for why you're saving. Mm. Reach out to the community, because there's a lot of uh, orphans, mm. the needy, mm. the existing. Mm. Uh, even before the COVID-19, those people who were there. Mm. Just that right now it is more apparent mm. that they exist, mm. but they have always been there and they are still there. So mm. we can always reach out to them. Okay. So actually, mm. fina the financial aspect, mm. uh, it, is, it really builds up that saving mm. culture. Okay. And it allows us to look at things from a mm. different perspective. Okay. If we talk about the current COVID-19 situation, mm. uh, you'll see that some businesses are closed and others are working. Mm. So it brings about that, that creativity, that, that financing. That once you save well, once you have a decent saving culture, then you are able to expound exactly. and diversify your, your, your business ventures. Yes, yeah. you can actually, uh, mm. because right now if the, the groceries are working, mm. but uh, mm. we've, actually, we've seen some people on the TV, on the news, mm. that have changed from what they were previously doing, mm. doing something that is uh, currently mm. acceptable. Okay. Because uh, usually what mm. is acceptable is now not. Okay. So there's that diversity. If you have that savings, mm. you can easily diversify okay. what you've been doing. Okay. And tap into other fields. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah, that is good. Because you have a, a proper saving culture, you are redirecting your, your resources where issues carry, meaning where issues really count, then you also have something to be able to spend in other, uh, you know, ventures. Uh, thank you so much. We are really winding up. Uh, as a guild president, maybe your last, uh, you know, uh, your last message to the, our DIP ones, and in capacity of a guild president, what is your last take? Uh, 
uh, so our dear listeners, uh, specifically the students, mm. uh, in this period uh, of fasting, mm. uh, let us encourage ourselves. Mm. Let us learn from the acts that we are doing. Mm -hmm. uh, first and foremost, uh, there is recitation of the Quran. Let us learn more mm. about our deen. Mm -hmm. uh, let us learn to recite the Quran. Mm. Let us find out more about uh, the things that are pertinent to Islam, mm. the pillars of faith, the pillars of Islam. Let's read more about them. Mm. Because I think we have some time uh, mm. since we're in lockdown and we're not studying and not rushing for a class. Mm. It is very important that we mm. learn mm. more about our mm. religion in okay. this given time mm. and we upskill ourselves in that regard as well. Okay. But let's also not forget that uh, academic excellence is key. So do not just mm. sit back and relax. Uh, mm. Try and learn something, mm. uh, something related to your notes or mm. something that is general knowledge in the world because uh, mm. it is really relevant mm. for a person to be able to multitask mm. uh, like we've talked about diversification so mm. it's when mm. you have knowledge about different aspects that mm. you'll be able to mm. uh, work upon that okay yes. okay thank you so much we now sign out and probably wait for uh, the coming week we shall be able to interact with you and share a lot more in this particular perspective thank you so much for viewing Muslim Digest. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.